Rise among us, let it rise. Oh, 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 let it rise. Say, let the glory, let the glory of the Lord rise among us, let the glory of the Lord. Rise among us, let the praises of the King rise among us, let it rise. Oh, 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 let it rise. Say, let the songs, let the songs of the Lord rise among us, let the songs of the Lord rise. Among us, let the joy of the king rise among us, let it rise. Oh, 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 let it rise. Say, let the spirit, let the spirit of the Lord rise among us, let the spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the freedom of the king rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, oh, oh. You know if the spirit of the Lord is in you, you ought to stand up this morning. Let it rise. Say, let the spirit, let the spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the freedom of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Say, let the glory, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. The glory, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, 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 oh. It was at camp that played a leadership role. We want to say thank you from the on behalf of the inner city church and the inner city ministry. You did sacrifice this week. You ran into some real challenges this week. That's the reason I got this verse up here. I can do all things. Say that with me, church. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. He gives me the strength. Life is filled with challenges. Camp is just a time when it's another group of challenges. When you take a group of people that have not been together except for one or two hours a week and you take them to camp and put them in close quarters and they are together for a week, it lets you find out just who you really are. And it gives you the opportunity to see. And what is so good in asking the young people that was there and they talking to me about what they enjoyed about camp. They said they enjoyed the food. Well, I could relate. I understand that. They said they enjoyed the devotionals. They said they enjoyed the Bible classes. And they enjoyed the swimming pool. Our kids are just healthy kids. But they tell me they enjoyed the time that they had learning more about Jesus and how to be like Jesus because 
Children are growing up in this world today in an environment that separates them from God. It's an environment that destroys them from trusting in God. The devil is at war against our families. God has given us the family first. He's given us the church to save the family. He's given us the government to protect the family. Our families is the core of God's plan. And the families of the inner city church, we must go to war with Satan and defend our children. We must protect our children by preparing our children. And it is not something you delegate off to somebody else. It is your responsibility. Next Sunday is Father's Day. And every time I hear the phrase of Father's Day, I think about the King James uh, translation in Malachi, where he says, I'm going to send you a servant, and he's going to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to the fathers. And lest we do this, the land will be cursed. And we can look around us today and we can see families, communities, cities, and even a nation that is walking into a curse because we now, rather than respecting our children, we are murdering our children through abortion. Fathers are neglecting their children. Rather than train their children, they're running from responsibility and wanting the government to take care of their children. The government can't take care of itself, much less take care of children. We put the government in a position that was never designed to do, and we need to quit expecting the government to do what God has told us to do, and sent his son died for us to set us free where we can teach our children how to be what God wants them to be. Our children must be taught, they must witness, they must see in our lives that we have the authority and the power to forgive and walk off from situations, letting the past be the past. Our life have been set free. Our lives have been set free by Jesus Christ. This morning I got a phone call from home and Granny was working with one of the granddaughters and they were having conflict. She didn't want to wear what Granny wanted her to wear. She didn't want to fix her hair the way Granny wanted her to fix her hair. She didn't want to wear the shoes that Granny wanted her to wear. And she just got stubborn. Granny handed me the phone said, will you talk to her? So what's going on? I'll tell you something, kid. You wear what Granny says wear. You put on the shoes she said put on. You let her fix the hair the way she wants it fixed. You're the child. She's the parent. And the Bible is clear. Children, honor your parents. And her comment was, yeah, I know that's what the Bible says, but I'm going to have to rewrite that passage. I'm going to have to rewrite that passage. That's what's going on in America today. Everybody's trying to rewrite the wisdom of God. She ain't going to rewrite nothing. She's wearing the right shoes. She's got the hair somewhat in that direction. We're going to get there. Piece by piece, youngin' by youngin'. We can do it, church. We cannot allow the devil to destroy us. And the way we do it is we grow in our trust to God Almighty. So may I am so proud that the Holy Spirit gave us the passage about when Jesus walked on the water to meet his disciples. And he gave us the story of the Apostle Peter, the one we look up to, the one we respect, the one that was already, always ready to go to war for Jesus. And then in Matthew, the 14th chapter and 25th verse, it says that it was early in the morning and Jesus, his followers, was in a boat and Jesus came to him on the water. Jesus walking on the water. Just picture this. All these guys, very diverse backgrounds, they're in a boat, they're out in the water, and they look up and they see in the darkness a person coming toward them walking on the water. And when they saw him walking on the water, it scared them. Well, who would it not scare? I mean, you know, I'm out here, all you fishermen, you out there, you look up and see some guy walking across here towards you on a boat. Tell me you won't get scared. It'd make you nervous. And they thought it's a ghost. And they started, you can just see all the things happening. Today, in today's world, somebody, you got a gun? Anybody got a gun? That's what we'd say today, gonna shoot him. That's what we'd do today. And they 
began to scream in, in fear. All these brave men, all these zealots, all these warriors, scared to death. Church, Satan capitalizes on our fears. Satan controls our fears. He takes advantage of every opportunity to keep us from trusting God Almighty. Now, we just got through saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And we must train ourselves. I don't care whether you're six years old or you are 60 years old. Some of us old folks, we get to the point where we get stuck on stupid. And we refuse to train ourselves. We think we've learned it all. Well, take a look at ourselves. We need some training. We need to always be improving. We shall always be trying to improve until we become like Jesus. That means we've got a lot of work to do. Don't separate yourself ever from reading God's Word. Always set aside. When you get too busy in your day to set aside a time to read God's Word, you are too busy. Take charge of your life. Don't allow Satan to take all of the strength of God's Word out of your life. Focus on Jesus. Read His message. Renew His Spirit. Let his spirit unite with your spirit. Or let your spirit unite with his spirit so you can have the strength, so you will not be, you will not trade your security for insecurity. You will not be afraid in running from fear, that you'll be able to hold on to what God wants you to do. We need to be people that will not let fears keep us from serving God the way we should serve God. We will need to be a people that trust God and we give time for God. Like we come to worship, Larry said, I just got sat down this morning and he said, turn off those telephones. Stay focused on what we're here for. You see, some of us refuse to allow and trust God. So when we get ready to live the way God wants us to live, we choose to do it our own way. We rewrite God's instructions. He said, for this reason, man shall leave his father and mother, shall cleave to his wife, and they shall become one. We change that. We want to do it as a relationship of convenience. We've even gotten so diverse now that we don't even cling to a wife. We want, men are wanting to choose another man to live with. We've got women wanting to choose a woman to live with. See how far we've come trying to do what that grandchild said this morning. I'm just going to rewrite that passage. We can't do that. We, God knows what's best for us. God's eternal, and this church has got to be. We will allow fear to control our lives so much that we won't prepare ourselves. Jesus said go out in the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. We will refuse to prepare ourselves to drive a bus to pick up people to bring them or a van to worship on Sunday. And rather we'll come here by ourselves, not inviting the people that was created in God's image, not inviting one of them to come and be with us because we are afraid if we were to drive, something might happen. And my challenge to you this morning is if we don't drive, something definitely did happen Sinners are left in a world to fend for themselves, and without Jesus, they don't stand a chance. Jesus is either the answer or he is not the answer. We must train ourselves to care about our fellow man. When Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself, he meant love our neighbors as ourselves. When Jesus saw these young men were getting so nervous, he spoke quickly to them and said, don't worry, it's me. He brought his healing power. Don't be afraid. But we've let Satan trick us into thinking that we need to be afraid of Jesus. We've allowed other people to tell us, rather than listening to Jesus, we've allowed preachers and we've allowed people that just basically dumber than a box of rocks tell us that Jesus is out trying to catch us in sin. And he wants to punish us and he wants to send us to hell. 
And that is not what Jesus is about. That is nowhere close to who Jesus is. Jesus knows we're in sin. That's why he went through all that scourging. That's why he went through all that punishment. That's why he allowed them to drive the nails in his hands. And that's why he let the blood of his body drop to the base of that cross was to get us out of sin. He's not trying to trap you in sin. He's trying to free you from sin. And you say, well, I've got my life so messed up. I can't make it as a Christian. Listen to what you just said. I can't be a good Christian. I can't be a Christian. I am not strong enough to be a Christian. What you're saying is, Jesus can't save you. You're saying that you have more authority than Christ, that you cannot accept his free gift of salvation. You can't get bad enough for Jesus not to be able to save you. But you can get stubborn enough for Jesus not to save you. You are allowing fear of what might happen keep you from serving God Almighty. And so Peter spoke up and said to him in the 28th verse, Lord, if that is really you, tell me to come to you on the water. Now see, he's already striking a deal. If that's you, Lord, he's already seen him walking on the water. And who else does he think is walking on the water? He said, you know, you don't see that every day. And Jesus already identified himself. So here Peter comes back, going to be bold and brave, and said, if that is you, hello, who else would it be? If that's you, Lord, if that's you, let me come to you on the water. And Peter said, jump, I mean, Jesus said, jump in. Trot on over here, son. Run on over here. And so Peter left the boat and started walk, walking on the water to Jesus. See, that's what some of us do. We start out and we challenge the Lord and we say, okay, I'm with you, Lord. And we'll sing the invitation song and say, come down here and, and start your life all over again. Be born again. Accept Jesus as your Savior. Confess that you believe he's the Son of God. Tony will lure you into that watery grave, and a miracle will happen. Everything you've ever done, everything you ever will do, is taken away. You will receive the free gift of salvation from God Almighty. Just like Peter jumped out of that boat and started booking right to where Jesus was. Started out the door. We come out of that baptistry. We walk out back in the community. We go back where devil runs free. But while Peter was walking on the water, he saw wind and waves. He started looking around. There's that lady that I don't like. She criticized my cooking. She took my boyfriend away from me. She stole my check last month. There's a lady that tells all these lies on me in the community. I don't like her. And I was baptized. My sins was washed away. I walked out here. I can't forgive her. I don't want to forgive her. I'm going to do this my way. And what happens to us? We start sinking back into sin. He saw the winds and waves, and did he get stronger? Did he look at it and say, man, there's winds, there's waves. And I'm out here with Jesus and I'm on the high water, I'm walking on water. I wonder how he really felt when he started walking on water and it was working and he wasn't sinking. I wonder what was going through his mind. But he looked around and he saw troubled times. When you was at camp this week, you had a bunch of little brats, our children, that we love dearly, in the cabin with you and they got on your nerves. You got on their nerves. You was on troubled waters. It was a time for you to, by example, you know your Bible classes were great. The message you taught was fantastic. You know the lesson they learned? Five years from now, most of them will not even know a word you said, but they're going to know how you acted. In church, this is true in the supermarket. This is true everywhere you go. I was in a restaurant yesterday afternoon, and I went in, and the place was about empty. And we sat down, and they came over immediately and took our order, and we sat there, 
Willie, we sat there, we sat there, we sat there. And Granny's getting nervous. We sat in there, and waiting and waiting and waiting. And finally, I called a waiter over and I said, "Hey, man, are we going to get any food or not?" And I stood. He come up, so I stood up, and I said, "Where? Are, what's going on? Why? I've been here over twenty minutes waiting. Well, what's 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 the issue?" I looked down, and Sandra said. So I, okay, I'll chill out. So I sat down. He said, we're going to be right back. We'll be right back with your food. Ten more minutes go by. I summons the gentleman back over again. I said, you trot me a manager out here. And so and then I really am getting up. Sandra, sit down, sit down, sit down. I said, I just want to check and see when our food might be coming out. So finally, here it come, and it was good. I got up and scarfed that stuff down. Got stomach problems from it, but I scarfed it down. Walking out of the restaurant, gentleman sitting over here said, "Hi, are you still on television?" I said, "Oh yes, yes, I'm on television. Yes, uh huh. Also, need to probably apologize to everybody in the restaurant, and, you know." People don't hear what you say. They see how you act. Jesus said we are the salt of the earth. People, we have to act like Christians all the time. I can do all things through. I'm 100 pounds overweight, and here I am fussing because I can't eat quick enough. <laughs> Satan don't give up on us. We need to quit looking around us and letting that determine who we are. We are who we are, but what happened on Calvary? That's who we are. I tell my children, I want you to make good grades in school, but your grades don't determine who you are. It's your confidence in God Almighty that determines who you are. If you will serve God Almighty, there's going to be a place for you in this world, and it's going to be where He wants you to be, and that is success. Make your decisions based on 300 years from now. Peter heads over there, and he sees the waves, and he got scared and turned chicken and started sinking. What do you expect? And Jesus called him with him and took him by his hand and said your faith is so small why do you doubt the question to us this morning at the inner city church is are we growing this is a test for all of us the question for all of us and it's a personal question and it's just between you and God I had not got anything to do with your life it's between you and God all I can do is encourage you and pray for you and try to strengthen you but are you allowing yourself, are you disciplining yourself to become more like Jesus? Are you the same this Sunday as you were last Sunday? Or after you took the Lord's Supper last Sunday, did you not grow any this week? When you were taking the Lord's Supper this morning, did you really evaluate your spiritual growth this week? Or did you block it out of your life and think about something else? Church, it's our responsibility, and it's our gift, and it's our privilege, and it's our blessing to be able to grow and be like Christ. And after Peter and Jesus were in the boat, the wind stopped. Church, when we go to Jesus, we're going to have some troubled times, but Jesus can control the troubled times. We don't know what tomorrow brings, but we do know who brings tomorrow. And I want to challenge us at the Inner City Church. We've got a great blessing coming our way. We are going to get this new property. We've already bought the thing. It's going to be remodeled, and we will be moving there sometime in the future. You won't know when that's going to be. I want to know when that's going to be. Everybody wants to know when that's going to be. We don't know when it's going to be, but we know it's going to be. And there's going to be a lot of people invest in that property, and they're going to give it to us. Now, but they're doing that because they have confidence that we are going to use that property to the glory of God Almighty and reach the city of Nashville. We cannot be afraid of the challenge before you. Church, if camp was difficult one week, I am talking about 52 weeks out of the year. We are going to bring chaos to the cross because only Jesus can heal the problems facing Nashville's inner city community. 
We got daddies that don't, children don't know who their daddies are. They're going to have to know who their spiritual daddies are. A little four-year-old girl called me one day standing in the front seat of my car, standing up in the car, and she looked over at me, and she called me church daddy. I'm not her biological daddy. I wasn't even her foster parent. But she called me church daddy, and it stuck in my heart and in my mind. Every one of us are church parents to children in this city that their biological parents have deserted Jesus Almighty. They may have a biological parent, but they are following the devil. We have the responsibility and the privilege to be the church parent to that child and train them in the ways of the Lord. They won't always do what we would like for them to do. But we have taught them about Jesus. And I can assure you, the scripture teaches us over and over that God's word will not come back void. In this new facility, we're going to be able to invite people in. We can invite families in. We can invite children in. We can have fellowship meals. We can spend afternoons together. We can spend evenings together. We can spend all night together. Because it will be ours. Our name will be on the deed. And our doors, our keys will be to the door. And nobody will tell us you can or you can't. We will be there praising the Lord. We can have a place where children can come. And we can set an example for them. And they can know the inner city ministry and inner city church of Christ. It's a spiritual place for them to go. And it will be a safe place. It'll be a place they can eat something. It's a place they can be loved. It's a place they can have their conflicts resolved. And the way we're going to resolve them is with the power of the cross. These and the followers in the boat worshiped Jesus and said, you really are the Son of God, like it was some kind of secret. They knew. We need to look at Jesus and see this morning. We need to look into our hearts. Can we really say Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God? He was the Son of God in the birth. He was the Son of God during temptation. He was the Son of God in the desert in that temptation. He was the Son of God on the cross. He was the Son of God on the resurrection morning. He's the Son of God this morning. He's the Son of God sitting beside you now. Are you ready to let Jesus take over your life? If you've been trying to make it in life on your own and you're not making it well, it's because you set Jesus out. Jesus is the answer. I want to encourage you right now. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, if you're willing to trust him, if you're willing to build that trust and take that step, step out of the boat of comfortableness and step out where Jesus is, give your hand to the man who has the power to take away your sins. Won't you respond this morning while together we stand and sing? Won't you come?